Bonjour, bonjour, Shopify world. My name is Andrew from ecomexperts.io and today we partnered with Power by Connect to explain you everything you need to know about wish lists and Shopify. Why do you need them? How do you work? How they can make you more money? And of course, what the Power by Connect app looks like. So let's just jump straight into it. Okay, so especially with everything going on in the paid ads world, you spent probably a pretty penny trying to get people to your website. Now they shop around, but most shoppers aren't ready to buy at the first time they come and visit. Now you can say, Andrew, I watched your videos. I know that I have to retarget because most of the first visits won't buy. And that is true, but there is more. But while yes, you can remarket, often shoppers, they just wanna come back and be like, like, oh, what did I like again about the store? And that's where wish lists really make a huge impact. As you may or may not know, wish lists are often lists that come into a heart button shape type of thing, where people kind of save the products that they like, but they're not quite ready to buy it. So now that we know what wish lists actually do, let's talk about the analytics and data side of wish lists. You see, much like a search bar, which we haven't quite covered yet, but much like a search bar, a wish list system can give you a good overview of what your clients actually like and dislike in your product selection. Not only that, but also if you don't have a wish list, you might have some shoppers like, for example, my girlfriend, who just adds things to cart instead of adding things to a wish list so that she has her little list on her cart. Now, quite a lot of shoppers do this when there is no wish list, and this creates the wrong data on your side because you're looking at all these add to carts and you're like, oh my God, why is it not converting? Well, in reality, a lot of people use the add to cart list as a wish list because, well, there is no wish list, so they're just like, all right, I'll just add it to the cart and that way I'll remember. And that gives you skewed data to work on, which is not great. So by separating the add to cart and the wish list, you have a much better overview of what's happening in your company. Okay, so it's not gonna come as a big surprise if you made it this far that we think you should probably have a wish list, especially if you have multiple products. Obviously, if you are one product store, there is no point in having a wish list. But if you have 20, 50, 200, 2000 products, you should definitely have a wish list. In short, the more products you have, the more urgent having a wish list is for you. Okay, so how do we get a wish list for Shopify? That's where Power by Connect comes in. So let's just quickly go to the Shopify admin, to the App Store, and install Power by Connect. You will notice that this is a new app, so there's not a ton of reviews just yet. Now don't let that scare you. It's a pretty good app. I like it. Also, it's not the first rodeo of this app developer. They have some other apps, some of them are pretty known. So uh, yeah, don't let the uh, lack of reviews scare you. Okay, we have installed the app. Now we're on the pricing page. We're gonna skip this page and get back to it later in the video because pricing definitely does matter and I do wanna talk about this for a second. So the app is installed and we are on the start guide right now. It's pretty straightforward. There's three steps that you have to do right here. Enable the pin and collect, choose the button type and choose where you want your wishlist button to appear. In our case, we'll be putting it below the buy now button because that kind of makes more sense to me at least, but feel free to do it wherever you want to. Okay, now it's time to place the actual button. Now this might scare some people, there is a little bit of code here, but if you watch all of our coding videos where we give like away free code on how to do stuff like this one right here, it's really no, no problem at all. So let's just jump into that uh, right here. First, we're going to copy the button. It's highlighted right here. And then we go to the online store. As always, we make a duplicate theme. That way, in case we mess up the code, there's a backup. Just good behavior to have. So to make uh, so to make the duplicate, you click next to the live theme right here on actions and then duplicate. All right, once the duplicate is made, you go to actions again and click edit code. Bienvenue in the code editor. This looks scarier than it is, I guarantee you. Uh, so in the sidebar on the left, scroll down to sections directory and then click on product-template.liquid, this one right here. Um, you can use a search for this step. So that's command F on Mac or control F on Windows. And then as you can see, it will open this little search bar right here. You can just try typing submit, the word submit. Um, and that way you find the button for your add to cart button because the button, the code behind the button says, hey, whenever you push this button, submit this form. Um, so that's why we look for the word submit. Now, you know, if you wanna place a button somewhere else, then don't look for 
or submit. Does that make sense? Um, so here it is, we're gonna scroll down a bit. Remember, spacing doesn't really matter in code, so you can do as much spacing as you like. And we're gonna place it right here under the Buy Now button. Um, then we're just pretty much it. We're gonna click on Save, and the button should be visible in our store. So let's go, let's check it out. Store Collections, Product Page, and boom, here it is. Pretty easy to spot. Okay, but the real magic actually happens when you add a product to this wish list, which, well, not surprising. By saving a product to the wish list, it will open the Power by Portal. And this is the fun part. Users can just share their wish list with their friends. So especially now that Christmas is coming up, you just make your little wish list and then share it to your significant other and then be I actually have to deal with this right now. People are like, what do you want for your birthday and Christmas? Because, and I'm like, ah, oh. so I'm just, I'm just sharing a wish list, done deal. So it's basically as easy as just pinning the product. And as you can see right here, you can you know add them to moments and then you can add a title and a description to the moment. So it can be like, okay, for my birthday or for baby shower or this and that. Um, and so that kind of gives more context to it and makes it extra easy. What I do sometimes is I add the sizing, my sizes into it, you know, can always be helpful as well. Although that it automatically does it, it I like to add it in the description another time. And then another cool feature, as you can see right here, is you can set an end date and that well, a start date and an end date. So in case you don't want this anymore by next spring, then just remove it. It's gonna be auto remove. Um, pretty useful. Like, oh, I, I would really want this, except if I find something else by then, then you know you can auto remove it. That way your wish list doesn't get cluttered because we all know that cluttered lists, no one uses cluttered lists. So might as well have a clean list. So I put an end date on things. But that's all from a user perspective. What does it have to do with a store owner perspective? Well, another cool thing besides offering these features to your users is analytics. It's going to give you a better breakdown of the data behind your store. We already talked about how it is going to help your conversion rate partially because you're not gonna have fake art to carts but there is more. You really start getting a better idea into your own products, especially if you have a lot of products. Again, not super useful if you have a two product store, but if you have multiple products, you're going to start having a better idea. And some of these products, you know, might not be selling. And you thought, well, that's really strange. I thought this would really work. Well, turns out it's a fantastic product, but people just don't buy it for themselves. They like to have it gifted to them. So that's why, you know, your sales are a little bit lower. Things like that you can spot with these wish list apps and you can then ask your marketing appropriately to that new information. And some people really, beside the right data being shown, so it show a significant increase in conversion um, using these wishlist app like Power by Connect, which is fantastic. In addition to that, because you can share these lists, you're bringing in new clients to your website because if I make a list and I share it with you, you're gonna click on it, you're gonna go see on the website and you're gonna be like, hey, this is a cool brand. So not only does it increase existing users, it also goes and finds new users. It's pretty cool. As with every app review, we look at the customer service. So um, if you have an issue, how easy can they help you? And I have to admit, they were able to address my issues pretty quickly. And then we partnered with them for this video. Um, and you can reach them by phone, by email, or just simply through the chat on the app. Okay, and what about pricing? Because it is time we come back to pricing. Remember how I said that this app makes sense the more products you have, the more this app makes sense? Well, their pricing kind of reflects that. It goes all the way from, let's call it what it is, $7 to $100 a month. Now, the $7 one is up to 1,000 SKUs. I'll put the definition of SKU right here so you know exactly what I mean. And then as this app can also collect emails and you know interact, users can interact with it, you're going to pay a fixed fee of six cents per email collected, of $6 per thousand Power by Connect impressions, and six cents per power by connect engagement. So you are paying for that extra engagement every time with the app, um, which is fine because, well, it, like I said, it brings in new customers, so it's kind of worth it. The concept behind our pricing is as more SKUs that you have, the more the price goes up, but the cost per engagement is going down. So that's kind of the logic behind our pricing. Um, figure it out, I mean, you probably spend more than $100 a month on Facebook ads 
anyway. So I'm not saying that the $100 plan is the one you should go for. I'm saying that if it brings in new users, this price is really relatively affordable. All right, that is it for this video. I hope you now understand why it's important for you to have a wish list option on your Shopify store and that Power by Connect is a great option to do that. Let me know all your questions and complaints. Please address them below in the comments as usual, and I'll see you in another Shopify related video. Ciao.